little uh, last minute details. It's Lara Croft, not Laura. My original announcer said, Laura. Laura Croft! Clear as day, I said Laura. Okay, Lara, going back. Check, check. One, two! Laura! God damn, did I really? Laura, it's counterintuitive for me, sorry. Check, check. Do it! Okay. Let's get this battle cracking. Welcome to the behind the scenes of Indiana Jones versus Lara Croft. This battle has been a long time coming. It's been a fan favorite. It makes a lot of sense. I don't need to explain it to you. It's a raider. It's a raider. Why not put them together? You might have ditched those pistols akimbo, but you're still the same rich back flipping bimbo. Brat with a treasure map to catastrophe, stuff in your knapsack with innocent casualties. I was intimidated by the prospect of anybody playing Indiana Jones, much less myself. Feels, um, out of my range. What inspired me to have the confidence to even try to play Indiana Jones was the impression of Han Solo in the Harry Potter battle. You land him in your face like, that'll do nicely. When I heard myself do it, I was like, hey, that's not that bad. Maybe instead of trying to worry about, can anyone look like Harrison Ford? Can we sound anything like it at all? Well, one of the things I discovered about trying to sound like Harrison Ford is that he barely opens his mouth. Saying when the sacred stone was taken, the village wells dried up. I was having trouble keeping that up when I was recording the rap, so I stuffed a paper towel in my cheek. Little tricks like that sometimes help, like alter the shape of your mouth to make it sound different. You're corrupting the youth. They should be outside, not trying to unload the barrels on your thighs. So far, it's working all right. So I'm watching. The fugitive in the background, that's where I'm finding my source of, you find this man. You find this man. You find that man. That's where I've been finding the, the angry Indiana Jones, the yelling Indiana Jones. Overshadow my drink like no <laughs> We went about finding our actress to play Lara Croft in a very different way than we normally do. Normally, we kind of branch out to friends or people we've worked with before, someone that we know, some sort of warm lead. However, when we were trying to find the actress to play Lara Croft, we needed to cast a much wider net. She needed to be able to rap. She needed to be able to be funny. She needed to be able to do it all in a British accent. That's a pretty niche set of skills. So we used a website called Breakdown Services. You can post your casting and then actors get access to it and they can submit, they can put video. So it made our search for Lara convenient and streamlined. I'm not gonna say it's easy because we got a lot of people who were great who submitted and making the choice was difficult. But as you're going through all the submissions, at some point or another, somebody just jumps out and grabs you. And that's exactly what happened when we found Croy. Hey, I am Croy Provence. I am Tomb Raider. Your whole story got blown up on a sitcom. There's a big bang you can't hide in the fridge from. Hang up the whip before you crack a hand. I think even Mike wants you to quit. Just do it! I kill dinosaurs for fun. What's another old geezer? I'll lock this battle up like Winston in the freezer. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Croy Provence. I've been rapping since I was nine. My very first boyfriend ever gave me the Marshall Mathers LP to listen to, and I put it in my Walkman on the bus, and I was like, I'll be doing this forever. Croy Provence. Oui, c'est moi. C'est moi. Bonjour, mon ami. Croy is an improviser and a comedian, and her submission video was stellar. Cross contour, a little bit of backlight, black ink after a bristle to baptize you. Can imagine a rush then too? There was something with her ability to use her voice as an instrument, as a percussive instrument. She also had this British accent she put on, and then I heard her speak without it, and I was really impressed with her accent. So that moment to me, I thought she had the role. Your whole story got put up on a sitcom, never been baby down high in the French front. Yeah! That's a professional right there. It's called Los Angeles, son! I'll start rapping and then start going at the normal pace of the song and then try to pick it up and see how fast I can go because there is some faster stuff in this song that I want to make sure that I can enunciate while I'm being British. You start off with something like haunted by the thought of what I should have been continuing, a mission that was rooted in a 20 year affinity. And by the time you're done, it's like haunted by the thought of what I should have been continuing, a mission that was rooted in a 20 year affinity. And then you turn it British, haunted by the thought of what I should have been continuing, a mission that was rooted in a 20 year affinity. Ugh. I love trying to challenge myself in speediness in that way and clarity and diction. 
Just getting my nerd on. It was her voice. The voice, the performance was first. And I get around the corner and look at the computer. I was like, oh my God, she looks perfect. To me, she looked like the Angelina Jolie version of Tomb Raider. Not exactly, but like, certainly more than I look like Harrison Ford. That's awesome. Uh, let's get a second gun up. Both gun. Look at that trigger discipline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, I messed up your face. I mean, I, I mean, smile, sorry. <laughs> This has been an awesome experience. Uh, we're having so much fun and it's gonna look awesome. So be sure to check it out if you haven't already. And you can find me on social media by my name. And that's the affection you got the sloppy seconds. You just decided to take damage and over here. You just your off like a road break. You're a dog baby. This makes me laugh. Screw you did this. <laughs> Fingers are just fun. Yeah. Marion is 15 when you raided her bow. That's no time for love, Dr. Jones. This is one temple that you'll never be exploring. You're not John Williams, so you ain't scoring. We're doing a lot of things for the first time with this battle. We use a casting system that we'd never used before. We work with an actress who we never used before. Not to be outdone, we're also going to use a completely new piece of software to create the backgrounds of this battle. And it's called Unreal Engine. And it's the same type of program that you make the backgrounds and the environments of video games with. And what better battle to use this type of background with than Lara Croft because it's Tomb Raider and that's a video game and we wanted it to look like the video game. Once I started exploring it, I really started to see some exciting potential for Epic Rap Battles of History backgrounds, even with conventional footage. So as you can see, this is really just a beautiful environment. It looks a lot to me like Lara Croft. It just has all kinds of scale and depth and it is manipulatable. So if I want to move this rock, I can give me that rock. If I want to duplicate this rock and just kind of turn it and put it over here, I can. Okay, look, I got a rock. In the past, with our more photorealistic, more grounded, real place type backgrounds, the movement has been limited to the sky, the clouds. That's really all we've had to make the majority of the movement in the background to make it feel alive. In Unreal Engine, there's all kinds of stuff moving, all this smoke little birds, you can have water reflections, mist, steam, all this kind of stuff. So it can really feel alive. You can kind of fly around in the world. And then whenever you get to somewhere you're like, man, that's a beautiful shot. You go ahead and create a camera and then you have a camera. If you want to pilot that camera, we can. And now we can change the zoom. You know, we can make it zoom in, zoom out. It's pretty exciting. Let's cut to the chase. Oh, wait, he died. I guess you couldn't tap the addicts in time. From the bandicoot to your family's playing in ashes, kid. You got a tragic history of a crash. The writing process on this battle was difficult. I knew a lot about Indiana Jones. I think I knew next to nothing about Lara Croft. It took a lot of research. So I played all three new games. I played the original game. I watched all the angry video game nerd pieces on Lara Croft. And Indiana Jones, for that matter. That's where the Atari Joe came from. You need to select the key to enter. You need the clock to tell you when the sun is rising. You need the medallion so the sun can shine at the right time and mark the spot on the mat where you have to find a shovel to dig for the ark. If you don't watch Angry Video Game Nerd, what's wrong with you? And I'm really excited for you to watch them. You should watch them. They're great. I feel like we wrote this song for a long time. We have versions of this song from years ago when we did demos of it and we started kicking lyrics around. There's one thing in your series I could never understand. Why do you use dual pistols when your fans only play with one hand? There used to be a Nathan Drake verse. He came down and he rapped and everything. There's demos with Nathan Drake. Oh me? Never. I thought it could have been funny. I think Nathan Drake coming in and then Lloyd wanted him to get smashed by a boulder. Overshadowed by Drake like, well, wait, somebody needs to make a tune for your old game. Uh, what's up, Doc? I gotta cut you off like one of Croft's tank tops. We're among thieves. Let's get to brass tacks. I'm here to, oh, no, no, no! Ah! That was one of those lines where it was like, gosh, we love this, but it's just not working. So we cut it. In the business, they call it killing your babies which I think they should probably find a different way to say. For the one trying to beat, figuring out why you're dressed for the beach. I've seen more class than the kids that teach. You can rise all you want, and I'm still out of reach. Circle around your products and run. You versus me, the sword versus gun. I did this the first four notes in my life. Pete really led the charge on the top end of the wardrobe on this battle. He ended up handing it all off to Morgan at a certain point, but a lot of the buying and picking and looking through stores and ordering stuff, Pete loves that stuff. 
So Pete just started buying stuff. Shirt, jacket, purses, shoulder bag, pants, tank top, bow at a flea market for $25. Not too bad, right? Not too shabby. Winter axe, books, violets, armbands, necklaces, leather glue. He just started making things. I would walk into the studio and there'd just be like scissors and straps of leather and like a mangled purse and like half a pair of shoes. Jiggle down, better girls, polygon one. Awesome, awesome. I got some interesting belt buckles. This is a like a snake, right? I thought that'd be cool. It's kind of a cross between the original Angelina Jolie Laura Croft belt and the anniversary one. Why did it have to be snakes? So this is a couple of buckle things. There's the belt buckle and then the leg straps and these are the side holsters. Glued on a little rivet to give it a little detail. <laughs> I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna call Lloyd now and see what he thinks. So I called Lloyd and he <laughs> he said it looked too BDSM. Hmm. Here's what I love and hate about Lloyd. He's almost always right. It was using this double loop thing and it created too many chains. So I found another old purse that had these solitary things. So I started over. So this is definitely looking better. Looks less like bondage and more like luggage. Yeah, this is vibing. I'm excited. Too many voices inside you. You burn through women quicker than I do. I think you should have dropped Hollywood as an option. When even Angelina gave you up for adoption. All right, the tripod's done for today. How'd you feel about the shoot? Yeah. Let's wrap on the iPod. Let's wrap on the tripod. Nice work, man. Try harder. <laughs> I can't believe we didn't make a Devo joke in here. Indiana Jones has a whip. Everybody knows it, but what you might not know is, these things are dangerous. When we first got this, Lloyd, Lloyd here in the studio just was raring to go. He was like, I'm gonna do it. Please do not do that. Really? Yes. What do you expect me to do with this? Don't crack that. Why? Because you can't do that here. You need like 20 feet of space. Whipping a whip, it's a good way to put out your eye. It's a good way to give yourself a scar on your face. It's a good way to end up in the hospital. So Pete practiced it a lot. <laughs> cool. Ooh, it's getting good. It's getting good. A really hard part about it is whipping it and then not making like the face at the end, like you go, because the thing snaps back at you. Let's cut to the chase of where you die. I guess you're gonna tap that in time. <laughs> so I gotta give props to Pete for uh, ballsing up and not cringing on every take of the whip. Action. Yeah, bro. So go grab your relics and run. You versus me is sword versus gun. Running is the first four notes in my theme. Damn, this is six weeks into dance class. These guys looking good. <laughs> One person that we brought on for this battle that I was very excited about working with was a really good friend of mine named Landon Kirksey. People don't pay for this footage, do they? <laughs> Landon, get back in your box. Okay. Now I've known Landon for a lot of years. He's a brilliant improviser and actor and voiceover actor. He's super talented and we've performed together a bunch of times on stage. We've never worked with him on the rap battles before, but I knew that Landon was a big time gamer guy. He loves video games. He's always got information about it. It's like a certain type of vocabulary and I didn't have it. So I called Landon up and I said, hey man, you wanna come over? After we worked with Landon on some of the writing and some of the jokes, we actually brought him in to do playback on the shoot day. Can you explain the new playback? Can I explain the new playback? Yeah. Well, I didn't know the old playback, so. Oh, but just playback. fake it and we'll cut all the rest of it out. You see, what happens is uh, for the new playback system, there's color coded, so, and the trick is though, I'm colorblind, so I don't even know what I'm looking at. 
you might think that playback is like the simplest thing. You just press play, but it's kind of more than that because it's an extra body in the room and someone who knows what's funny and someone who's a good laugher. <laughs> And someone who, when I'm directing, I can look at and go, is that, is that funny? It's so valuable. I even want you to quit. Just do it! For goddamn funny. <laughs> Landon came through and was listening to our ideas and listened to our first demo and said, there's no joke about the nude codes? And uh, I didn't know about the nude codes. And when he said it, I was like, that makes sense for like horny gamers. But it ended up being the ending line for the whole battle. Cause you know the baby boomer beating me up rapping. That's like my nude codes. That's the rap on cry! Yay! ERB patrons, thank you so much for making this all lovable. If you haven't checked out our Patreon page, please do. It's patreon.com slash ERB. It's a really great way to dive in a little bit deeper on what we do, get a little bit of extras, get some bonus content, get some leaks, and have an influence on the things that we do. Also, on a personal note, I got some music coming out. I remixed a couple of songs that are old, Pawn specifically, and I also uploaded a new song called Escape from LA. Escape, escape, escape. catch that on my Spotify page and I'd love to have you listen to it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't and click that little button on the ERB2 page and also on the main page. It helps you get notifications and let you know right away when we upload a new video. Thanks a lot. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Enjoy the rap battle.